So I'm Chong Ti from Singapore, and we'd just like to see a show of hands over here. Who likes to travel? Okay, almost the entire room. So we are like-minded, we are like-minded. So I love traveling, and traveling the world is one of the things that I cherish the most. And since young, um, before, even before I'm in university, I like to travel. But as a student, I have to travel with a budget. So I ended up traveling to Southeast Asia, which is um, where Singapore is near. And along this journey, I went to many villages, in villages in Malaysia, Indonesia, Cambodia, and I came across something very different um, in some of these places. So I was on an overseas community development project, and I was teaching some kids English, you know, uh, just a small, simple town in the outskirts of Malaysia. And I came across this. So I was just walking with my friend, walking, 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 and we were on our way back to the village, and then we saw these ladies with buckets full of orange stuff. And I thought to myself, and I asked my friend, like, hey, um, what are they carrying? Are they selling, like, orange juice or something? You know, and there's lots of ladies, women, children, just carrying it and walking. So it was a sweltering day. I was extremely thirsty. I was running out of water in my bag. So I went up to my friend and said, like, hey, can we buy, buy this from them? And my friend was like, dude, Chong Ti, do you know where that water came from? And I was like, no, I don't. So she brought me to this creek, and in the creek is water. And I saw more children over there. And the water is water that flown from a certain river, and it contains worms, parasites, bacterial and virus in the water. And he was saying, like, now, do you want to drink this? And I got a shock of my life, you know, Children aged less than five, you know, just scooping water, collecting the water from the river, and bringing it back. And I can't imagine how far they have to walk, because it was almost one hour of walk for me to the, to the, to the creek and back. And when I got back, I realized that not many places in the world have clean access to water. And this is another photo I took on one of my journey. And you can see the water that comes out is completely brown. And the children are drinking this water. And slowly, I started noticing more and more evidence of what drinking this water could do. So I see children who are suffering from like diarrhea, and they're going to the toilet 10 times a day. And that's definitely not normal. So when I talked to some of the village doctors, they told me that these people have chronic diarrhea. And this is caused by the waterborne illnesses that's caused by drinking water that contains fecal bacteria, um, feces, and pathogens. And this is what we expect when we turn on the tap every single day. You know, we turn on the tap, we brush our teeth, and then we go to work. But this is the reality that many of these children have to face. So about 2 billion people in the world is drinking contaminated water right now. So if you have 700 Facebook friends, about 200 of them are drinking this water every single day. Can you imagine that? And this causes a lot of health issues, diarrhea, dysentery, and many more. And I live in Singapore, which is part of Southeast Asia, and there's already about 600 million people who are facing this problem every single day. And globally, it's about 2 billion. And a simpler, faster, and more cost-effective solution is needed. So when I went to university, I decided to take up engineering because I really liked, you know, to tinker with tools and come up with solutions. And then I started looking into the market, like what are the solutions out there? And I saw, hey, some people use like ceramic pots. They pour the water in and let the water trickle through. But the water isn't really clear after it is filtered. And what's more, Boiling water. So my, my grandma and my mother, they like to boil water. You know, everything is, uh, if you don't boil the water, it's not drinkable. So boiling is one way to treat the water. But in the village, you know, after boiling the water, it remains brown. And there was this occasion where I saw this mother putting, like, basically coffee powder 
into the water for the kid. I'm asking like, why are you giving the kid coffee? You know, and she told me, Chong Ti, if I don't add some flavor to the water, the kid wouldn't even drink the water. And that horrifies me, that horrifies me. So there are other solutions, very complex, but I realized that the villagers, they might not have the ability to operate some of these systems. And a lot of times they tend up getting broken or they're just kept in the shelf after it's, you know, it's being delivered to them. And you know, I started looking around, talking to NGOs as well as humanitarian groups. And in some of these developing places, they simply do not have the budget to lay pipelines to these places. You're talking about large swaths of lands, hundreds of kilometers to about 10, 20, 100 people. How do you bring clean water to them when it costs billions of dollars? So because of all this bureaucracy, because of all these issues, these people do not have access to clean water. So I decided to go back to the lab and I started tinkering with the tools. I started looking at all the different possibilities there is to build a water filter that works. But it wasn't easy. I failed again and again. And because of my background in engineering, I deal with large, large treatment plants and big systems. But this system usually costs hundreds and thousands of dollars and they are not portable. If you are going to some place in a small village where there's no roads, mountains, you know, there's almost no way for you to bring these big water plants into these places. And in light of this, I decided to start Water Room. So Water Room is a social enterprise that does innovative technology that can downscale this complicated solution into something that is safe and simple so that people can get access to clean drinking water. So this is a system I've developed, and if you look at it, it looks kind of similar to a hand pump, right? It looks like a, a simple hand pump. And that was part of my idea to make it very similar and very comfortable and familiar to people on the ground. So the Rome Filter Plus is safe, simple, and swift, right? It's able to filter out dirty water, and it's able to filter out dirty water without any electricity. So firstly, I ensure that the water is safe, by removing the bacterial and viruses from the water, the biggest culprit of sickness and diarrhea in these places. Next, I make sure that the systems are simple to use. So they can't be too complex. So we make sure that the system can be set up within a minute and transported to these places very easily. And lastly, we have to make it swift. You have to be fast to transport. So one system like this weighs three kg and you are able to actually bring it to any place that you want and is able to provide safe drinking water for a community of more than 100 people. So this is how we empower the communities. This is Mr. Ritz over here in Cambodia, and he has figured out how to use the system. So um, Anta, do you mind bringing out the system right now? Okay, so I'm gonna do kind of a sh quick demonstration later on, but this is how the system can be set up. So you have water over here that's really, really dirty, right? This water is not drinkable. And this is what these villagers were carrying. Right, if you can see the water over here, if I open the tap over here, and push out the water. This water <laughs> is really contaminated. So this one isn't clean, okay? But I'm gonna do it very, very easily. So what I do over here is to open the tap, pull up the piston over here, okay? And then with a single push, you get water that's directly drinkable. You can see the differences over here. One is really, really brown and then one that's drinkable. So that's what I did. So I started working with my friends, and we started talking to corporates, to humanitarian groups, and we started pitching our idea to them. And then over time, we make iterations of the product and we make it better and better. So this is us in um, Laos after a disaster, and this is us in Myanmar, in Lombok, in Indonesia, and this is us in some of these post-disaster um, um, post zones 
you know, where people don't get access to clean water. So in these places, there's no electricity, no infrastructure, and they need to get water fast. And the system can be operated in different modes, so not just only through a hand pump. You can fix this up with a water tank, right? You can fix this with, um, say, an electrical pump. Or if you have any borehole that has a simple um, um, way to generate pressure, you can actually use the same system to produce water even without pumping. So it makes it a system that can grow with the community as they start from maybe just a place without electricity to eventually a place with um, you know, some basic infrastructure like water tanks. This solution can grow with them and grow with the community. So we are able to provide these um, communities for some of these villagers who then use this to you know, generate clean water and sell it to some of the local communities. And there's also a way for them to actually generate income so it creates not just clean water, but it cre also creates a livelihood for these people. So since the start of our journey, we have been able to impact about 83,000 people across Southeast Asia and across the world. <laughs> Thank you. But this wouldn't be possible without the partnerships of sponsors, corporates, and without the dedication of the team. So I didn't come to this point, to be able to impact these people alone. I had mentors. I have like-minded people. And there was, there was once, um, during an interview, someone asked me, you know, with young people nowadays wanting to only get corporate jobs, money, you know, do you think, you know, why, why do I want to do what I do? And I said, sorry, I disagree. Um, I don't think young people are only out there for this. I think young people are very optimistic and they believe in change. And this is what I strongly believe in as well. You can only change, but it's not just by thinking, but it's by taking action. Action is extremely important if you want to effect change. So to wrap this up, I would like to share with you my goals. So I want to improve the life, living, and livelihood of individuals all around the world and I want to use technology, innovation, and social integration to develop these communities. Um, by 2020, I want to impact 100,000 people. Um, I know there's 2 billion people in the world right now, but I'm setting my immediate goal for 2020 to be able to impact 10,000 people with better access to safe drinking water. I want a 99% reduction of diarrhea and sickness in these communities. I also want them to create a better livelihood so that they can grow and get out of poverty. This is not possible if we just look at the aspect of water. And this is why we constantly emphasize on education, communication, and developing relationships with the people on the ground. So with this, I would like to thank you for your time. And you know, these are some of the places where we are out there on, Facebook, Instagram, and War Room, on our website. So, Please visit us, and I hope you join us on this journey to end prolonged thirst. Thank you.